Really, the heart of the Olympics is the ancient games from Greece and the whole idea of higher, faster, stronger. That's a, kind of a universal you know, measure of what a real sport is. You know, it's like who can run the fastest, who can swim the fastest, who can lift the most weight, who can throw something the farthest. When they watch the Olympics, they're going, you know, who's the, who's the greatest athlete in the world? The undisputed star of the competition was Ohio State University track star Jesse Owens. So the first Olympics to have golf uh, were in France in 1900. Uh, the first winner was an American, Charles Sands. And they were dubbed the farcical Olympics because, you know, they basically only had about a dozen people competing. It was almost like an event that you could show up and sign up for the week ahead of time. And it would have been fascinating to see if, if the Olympics nowadays were like that. Can you imagine being able to show up in Rio a couple weeks before the event and say, you know, I have, here's my handicap card and I'd like to play. In 1904, a Canadian won, George Lyons, and he was actually all set to defend his title in London in 1908. And at the last second, golf was taken off the docket because of this, you know, argument between the RNA and the Olympic Committee over, you know, what the eligibility requirements were. And so George Lyons arrives in London and there's no tournament. They actually offered him a gold medal, but he declined it, said, hey, if I'm not playing, I'm not taking it. Golf almost made it back into the Olympics in 1996 at the Atlanta Games, and the, the, the big catalyst for that was Billy Payne, and he really wanted it played at Augusta National, and he wanted golf to be a spotlighted event at, at Atlanta. The problem was that Augusta National at that time was all male, and the IOC principles, in particular Anita France, felt like, well, that's sexist. We can't have that, you know, we can't have that kind of structure. For golf to get back into the Olympics, it really had to convince the Olympic Committee of three things. One is that golf has a huge global participation. That was an easy point to prove. There are 30,000 golf courses in the world, 145 countries have players. It's a huge sport. Second, golf had to prove that it could fall in line with the Olympic anti-doping procedures, and the PGA Tour instituted that into its regular play seamlessly. Third, Golf had to prove that growing the game and developing it internationally was a fundamentally good thing. Everybody's rooting for a great tournament, but I think if the, the venue holds up and if there's drama, and I think if you see a lot of emotion, like in the Ryder Cup, you know, where you see it mattering, you know, the Olympic spirit, so to speak, if you see that vividly, that bodes well for the, for the sport. Uh, I think we're making a lot about the men dropping out, but that's secondary if you get some of those other pieces that we're talking about here. Probably the two most important figures in getting golf back into the Olympics were Peter Dawson, the former uh, CEO of, of the RNA, and his American counterpart would have been Ty Votov, the PGA Tour. I think both those guys uh, just looked at it as, as the, you know, the right play, the smart play for the game in the future.